Good afternoon. This is Mr. Bobby Stills and Paul Banks. You got to be from Banks and Stills. We're checking out Hip Hop DX. She's how I made this. She lacks patience. But for her love, there's no replacement. Face to face, waste embracing men. Chase the taste that most will get strong from the first. We're gonna, Banks and Stills, the project, man. Uh, I read the bio, and it was about y'all playing chess. I thought that was hilarious. The bio? Yeah, the bio, because you guys sat and talked to Torre about it. And the way it sounded was that, Paul, you lose all the time. Oh. But you're a good <laughs> opponent. What's it like? Like, what, what's it like playing against someone that you lose to all the time? I mean, that's, that's kind of how it is. If you go online and you play somebody of a higher ranking, then it just sort of feels like um, it's like a an army that's bigger than yours just kind of crossing the board and it just feels like this is inevitable from pretty early on in the game you know i'm not i'm not going to come out on top of this one um but i mean that's the game i don't mind losing i i think i always learn whatever game i play and we don't we haven't got to play that often where it kind of feels like man you know what, what's going on but uh yeah. yeah i haven't won yet i mean i think it's an interesting way for a project to come together you know, it sounded like that was ended up being the foundation for, or at least, you well, know, in that. Well, you're looking at two musicians here, you know what I mean, that's both accomplished in their own right, you know. And, you know, the chess was really like the leisure time we spent together. It was before we even talked about making music together. Uh, my manager, Tyler Childs, who's our manager, um, just thought, you know, two cool New York musicians could, should hang out. So it was a... Uh, he told me, you know, Paul's gonna be at the Tequila Bar, uh, New York. Just go check him out. Good dude. Checked him out. It was a good dude. You know what I mean? We made a night of it. Like you know, from tequila to noodles, ended up in the club. You know what I mean? <laughs> Having a good time. And and then uh, you know, do our conversation. I learned that he was a chess player. So he's like, yo, let's hook up some time to play chess. And that hooked up in New York. He was in Cali. He was in town. Tyler, yo, Paul's in town. Hooking up, playing chess. That was just more like the friendship connection of just two dudes. Just having that downtime and just chilling. Um, but when the idea came to make music, that was probably like almost a year later, you know what I mean? And uh, once again, even that energy was two musicians coming together with no expectations, you know? Yeah. And that was 2013 is when the idea to start making music came together? Yeah. yeah. What was the first track you guys completed? The first track that we completed that you can hear on the record is probably I Can't Hardly Feel, which was, um, that was like one of two demos that, that got us, you know, in touch with Warner Brothers. But, you know, we jammed on, uh, we made probably like 10 or 12 songs in the first five days that we got together. And that, I think, just kind of, kind of showed us, okay, there's something here, we can work together. But out of those first songs, I think only two are actually on the record. Yeah. What was the other track? Conceal. Conceal. Yeah, yeah those two made the record. And um, I remember in the beginning though, right? You know, just hook, hanging out. I had this old um, drum machine that Sly and the Family Stone would use. And I've never used it yet on none of my productions. You know what I mean? And I was like, maybe this is the sound of ours. Remember the one I had in my drum room? I was like, this, and we tried that. We did a demo on that. Then we was like, okay, wait, I got all these beats in the MP, all these in the MV. So we was just going through a lot of different music, finding, he had a lot of, you know, foot pedal, good brought his foot pedal and his guitar. One song I did like that we that we never really finished was uh Love Love Life. Life yeah, yeah, Love Life. Awesome. Love Life. Love Life. Yeah. Which which you know, which was a vibe uh, you know, even though we didn't that song didn't make our record, the idea of that song I think is in the spirit of our music. Love and life. You know what I mean? Um but when we I think Paul had left and he was he had, he had connected with my engineer and I had a folder of, of beats that, you know, that I kind of, you know, I came off to and kind of like dumped. I kind of took a shit, I call it. You know what I mean? Of all my creative energy. And he had that in that folder. And Paul had, had went through that folder, even when I didn't know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he asked the engineer to send it to him. And when he sent that to him, he, you know, he wrote some songs to that. One being Harley Phil, another being the foundation for Casil. And that was, uh, um, our, our manager played it for an executive, and he was like, oh, what is this? And it sounds cool. And he said, a meeting up. And we said, all right, well, we could do more of this, right? Yeah. And we did more. 
I mean, I listen to the project. It sounds like y'all are having actually a good time, right? There's a range of emotions that come through this. Sometimes it's it's serious and it's it's loaded with heartbreak. Sometimes it seems like it's uh, uh, giving you advice or perspective on how not to be in uh, troubled or tough situations. But the feel from it is like it makes me wonder like where the actual songwriting began, right? So it's great to hear you know where you know how love and life is the undertones. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's exactly what it feels like. And it reminds me a lot of the stuff that you were talking about around A Better Tomorrow, mm. which was, I guess, around that same time in the conversation when you were putting that project together, except this feels more cohesive. Yeah, well, I think, I think on my, I think as far as my energy is concerned, um, I'm definitely at that level of life, you know, to really kind of, you know, take it seriously, but don't take it so seriously. Definitely have fun in my day, you know what I mean? You got sun, it's gonna be sunny days, it's gonna be cloudy days, you know what I mean? You look at a song like Anna Electronic, right? Which to me is, is you know, you'll never find a song like that on a Wu album, you know what I mean? And even even far as my performance on it, it's very corky, you know, very, uh, I wouldn't even say it's, 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 it's lyrical, it's, it's not like I'm conscious of my lyrical content. I didn't care about my lyrical content in the sense of, Sometimes when an artist writes his lyrics, he's trying to write the best. He wants to, everybody to praise him. But on that particular song, love is a house. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got the key. I'm like a city mouse. Mama, you got the cheese. It's like James Brown's song. Please, please, please try me. Mama, don't leave. Like, I just, I just having, I was having fun. And it goes along with the fun of the music and the, and the, and the, and the fun that his voice was bringing. You go up, you come down, you know. Um, I just think that that was a that that energy, you know, when you hear that song, I recall after we recorded it, and I drove home from the studio, and I had uh, my driver, you know, you know, you put it in, you play this, and he was like, he just started having a good time. <laughs> he was smiling, he was hitting the button back on us. All right, cool, it's a good song, yeah. And it has no gravitas to it. It's just like listening to uh, a Beach Boy song almost. Mm hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Beach Boys, good comparison. All Fair in Love and War. Okay. What keep in score for? How you secure your borders. That's big. That's big. That's big. That's big kid. That reminds me of like, hey, y'all, uh, if y'all don't want to hear me, you just want to dance. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's, for me, that's something that stuck with mm -hmm. me longer, way longer than after the album actually ended. But that one line, better secure your borders. That's big. Uh -huh. kid. That Glad you caught that. <laughs> but that's kind of then. That's sort yeah. of almost in the face. Um, where does that come from? Yeah. I mean, I, that's that's just the the themes of that song. You know, are kind of about the, you know, the battles that are waged, the battles of the sexes, and uh, I think, I don't know, man. That's that's my lyrical style. Really, is I kind of like things that can kind of be taken on a surface level and then on a level beneath that. Um, so so sometimes they can be kind of fun and silly, but then you think about it and it gets a little heavier. But in that case, I don't know. It just feels sort of appropriate to the themes of the song. How did Ghostface feel about that? Was, was um, he recorded with you guys, or was that the verses you had? No, no, he recorded with us. I mean, he came in the studio. I told him, I said, "Yo, I got. I'm, on a, I'm doing a special project. I got this song, yo. I just think that you could set this off, yo. You know what I mean? And um, and he he had his verse before me, really, right? Mm -hmm. Pause, yeah. And also, Love and War goes all the way back to that first session, man. That's where I first wrote the hook. Yeah, as far as the, um, the, yeah, the hook and the beat. The hook right? and the beat, yeah. yeah. And then I came back to it, like I found, because we've had like 40 songs, you know, in different stages of completion since we started. And that was one that I found on an iPod. And I'm just like, the beat came back to me. I was like, this is one of the best beats that we worked on. But that um, that track almost got lost. I just remember. Oh, yeah. That. I had to go through heck to find the, yeah. the, the, <laughs> the, breakout. the, the breakout of it. You know, we had a studio. You know, you, nowadays people got studio mixes, but they don't have the snare, the kick, and the hi-hat separated no more. You can't mix a record like that, kid. But um, no, but Ghost, you know, he came, he came to the studio, Electric Lady, you know what I mean? And uh, you know, he laid it, he laid it down. You know, I remember, I remember he first, when he first dropped that Cosby line. Everybody was like, "Yo, yeah. you know what I mean? You we used to be like Claire and Bill Cosby." I was like, "That's that sums it all up." Imagine a relationship that was that tight. That's now she's keying up his car. You know what I mean? And then that inspired me. Like she's bitching. I'm bitching, I'm, she's switching, I'm switching. She's talking, I'm not listening. 
<laughs> and I'm bitching about her in the kitchen, yo. And that's, you know, those, I don't got that in my life now, unfortunately. I got to say that out loud and shit. Like, <laughs> On camera, my, my life for is, the record. My life is good right now. You know what I mean? All praise is due. But, no, but I've definitely been through bad relationships. And, and sometimes uh, I think that, you know, those are things that teach you and, and, and probably make you better for the next relationship. You know, I think one of my lines, and not to be talking about myself so much, but hey, it's me. But I think I said something like, um, um, she's high patience, no, she lacks patience and she's high maintenance, but for her love, there's no replacement. You know what I mean? At the end, I was like, and I'll do it all again just to touch the skin. Well, that's actually that's kind of iconic, yeah. yeah. But even that, that, that concept of like going through pain, but would you do it again? And most likely, most most of us will. The lead off single for the album, right? I mean, the video is cinematic. It's inspired by Reservoir Dogs. You've got, in my opinion, it's the best video of the first half of the year. I haven't seen anything oh, better. Um, it's funny. They don't pay you guys enough to chase after cars. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of, uh, you're watching the guy get beat up bloody. There's a dance sequence. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, spoiler alert, a great escape. You know, like what else can you really ask for in a music video? You know, and this is, uh, again, it's, it's a song that to me sounds like it represents love and life. And you guys really put a whole lot of energy into the visuals around it. Mm -hmm. Did you guys know this was going to be the single? And if not, how long did it take you to connect it to the story that you end up telling with the visual? I don't think that we necessarily call it the single as much as that. It's just an album track that we thought was sort of representative of this project and a good kind of first look for people to get used to the idea. Um, I don't know if I need to make that distinction between being a single or an album track. Um, as far as the visuals, I mean, that was just a process of developing it, you know, the concept with the director. I think uh, I was kind of into the idea of something with the Yakuza. And um, I don't know. I think that's one of those things where we sort of, we had some good ideas and then they came out sort of even better than you could have hoped. You know, you can't really control if it's all going to work out the right way. But I think the director came through. I think the actors really came through. The casting was great. Riz's improvising killed it, you know. With the, the, it's genuinely funny, that video. I see this video that captures all of that. But what have you learned working with uh, Riz in the studio and vice versa? Uh, I mean, a lot, a lot about mixing, a lot about being an artist, about being a musician. Um, I've learned a lot about being a person. It's, it's been a very kind of fulfilling collaboration, I think, creatively and personally. And vice, uh, and vice versa, you know what I mean? And I think one of the coolest things for me is, uh, is Paul's a very capable man. He's very capable of doing it and handling himself, you know what I mean? He, he don't, it's not long goodbyes, you know, you know what I mean? Like some dudes be, yo, it's like bong, and, it's, and, and we know we gotta be there, we're gonna be there. He's, he, he's, he's dependable. And when you look at something like when we are, we're, we're making our music, <clears throat> there's times, you know, that I could be burnt out, yo. And I'm like, I'm burnt, but he's not burnt. And he keeps it going. You know what I'm saying? And it could be time where he's like, well, I'm, I'm taking a chill. And okay, cool, and I'll keep it going. I like to use the analogy, it's like two pilots. And, 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 and no matter what, the plane is gonna stay in the air. You know what I mean? And that's how this album has been recorded. It's like, he knows how to use Pro Tools. You know what I mean? If the engineer is missing my punch, he sits right there and catch that punch, yo. You know what I mean? And the same thing if the engineer is missing his punch. I'm like, hold on, hold on, man, you're going back too far. He, 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 like, he likes it two bars, not one bar or six bars, you know what I mean? So that kind of energy, uh, comes across in our, in, our, in our music, but it definitely was a great uh, experience in the studio collaborating with him, whereas the pressure wasn't all on me.